this is Justin from the .ml project. In this screencast, we're actually going to show um, a preview of the tracker plugin that comes with version 6 of .ml that should be released in a couple weeks. Um, the tracker plugin for version 6 has been basically rewritten. Um, if you're familiar with the tracker plugin from version 5, it's, it has some of the same designs, but we've, we've, uh, we've kind of supercharged a lot of the features. And uh, that's what I'm going to show you right now. So I'm at the uh, the default screen of the Trucker plugin, and it will show me a a table that has all the uh, the mass mailings I've just done, plus a chart that shows the same information, just in a graphical nature, which is great. Um, one thing you'll you'll notice, I'm going to just refresh the screen, and we're just going to see how how long it takes for those charts to be made, pretty much instantaneously. Um, this is because this information is now cached. Um, the cache is pretty smart, so um, when the data gets stale, it'll just throw out the cache and create new data. And if you just want to uh, clear it yourself, you can. There's a little button. Thank you. And um, that data will be recreated for me, and that didn't take too long either. So um, the chart at the bottom um, is it's a kind of upgraded. Um, it's interactive, so if I want to see the data at this point, I can. So the blue line is number of subscribers on my list, and I can tell on August 17th, when I last sent a mass mailing on this list, I had 9,100 and some odd subscribers. That's pretty cool. So each uh, point on this list has the same uh, same features. Um, red is open, so I can do the same there. And if I want to see, like, you know, like how the trends are going, it seems like, you know, mostly, looks like a little dip of my subscribers, probably because the, the balance handle I did its business. But um, open seemed to be pretty much the same, going up a little bit. So it looks like... On um, the bounce line, I took invalid email addresses, and more people are opening my messages, which is great. Um, if you're not familiar with the Tracker plugin, all this information is uh, easily exportable in CSV format. So if you want to like open that up in Excel or something a little bit more powerful, you can and do your own um, analysis. Um, the preferences of the Tracker um, has been cleaned up a little bit. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out what um, what you can do if you want to track message opens. You just click that link. If you don't, you can click it off. Things like that. Um, right now, I have it set to auto tag all the links in my messages. So it, all the messages, every time someone clicks on a link, it gets recorded. If I don't want to do that, say I only want to record one link in my message, I can do that and uh, just manually pop that um, redirect tag into my email message which is red. I'm going to keep it on auto tag message links because I've gotten used to just uh, you know sending my message and forgetting about that. So that's uh, the overview of uh, the tracker plugin. We're going to click on um, the last mess mailing I did and uh, we'll get we'll kind of go down one level and just see the information for this just one email that I sent out. Um, the first table shows uh, basic information, um, number of subscribers, number of click-throughs ahead, number of opens, archive views, forward bounces, things like that, which is kind of cool, so you can get kind of a sense on how your, your message is doing. So from the 9,100 subscribers I had, it looks like um, a little bit over a third of people um, subscribed to my list um, recorded and open, which is great. Um, and then I had 422 click-throughs um, made for my message, which is also awesome. And this is kind of interesting. Um, almost 900 people have viewed the message um, online, um, just in the, uh, the the archives available, which is rad. And about 800 bounces, um, which is less than a tenth of my subscribers. So for the list this old, it's over 10 years. That's pretty good because people, you know, after a while, move to different email addresses. So if I want even more information, I can. Um, Go down here, and I can see um, uh, the the information um, broken down in different ways. So I'm looking at click-throughs by country now, um, and all the countries. This is listed in number of click-throughs. I can change the order by um, alphabetical by country, or just go back to click-throughs. And then you can see over here, it's a graphical representation of that data. So I can see just an instant that's like, ooh, okay, most of the clicks are from the United States. This makes sense because it's an English you know, newsletter, um, and I'm from the United States. Um, a lot of click-throughs from England and Canada, Australia. And then, you know, you get some surprises like a little bit from Brazil. I wonder what's going on there. Um, if you scroll down, you can also see the click-throughs over a length of time. And the general trend is most people check out um, a message as soon as it's sent, and then there's a precipitative drop-off. Um, 
And, but you, you'll see that over time, there's still people clicking on these links. So you, you kind of wonder, like, a month after, I'm sorry, three months after, two months after someone I sent it, there's five click-throughs going on, and it kind of continues that trend. Um, and if I go over here, I can see the click-throughs by broken down by URL. So the most popular link clicked was the, the purchase um, link, which is great. And then the second popular link was a uh, story um, in the weekly in Denver about a bike race I did. So that's kind of cool, too. That was the last link on the email newsletter, so it seems like people have read through the entire newsletter. That's pretty cool. And like uh, the, 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 the default screen, I can download just the information from this mes message and do my own analysis. Um, so similar information is available for opens, archive views, forwards, and bounces. Bounces is a little different. Um, it's broken down by um, domain name, and usually that's a, a, like a, a web-based mail service like Hotmail or Gmail. Um, and if I go over here, I can actually see you know, a list of email addresses that are bouncing. And if I click on one of the email addresses, I can see the entire history of this email address and the bounces it's creating. So uh, that's kind of cool. I can make sure things are working correctly on my mailing list, and if they're not, I can take action. But I think everything's going pretty well. You know, email addresses on mailing lists just bounce every once in a while. That's that's nothing to be worried about. Um, and like I said, like this is an AOL address. Like this pro person probably just left AOL to something a little bit, bit different. Lots of AOL addresses actually. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to go back to the click-through screen, and uh, what's cool about this, um, version 5 also broke down things via country, but this one actually, we can actually click the country and get it broken down by area in the country, which is pretty cool. So you can see that a lot of the click-throughs were happening kind of in the, uh, the San Francisco area of California, which is kind of rad. And then you can kind of see that most of them are coming from Mountain View, California, so... Someone, someone, someone really likes data mail on Mountain View, um, and again, this is available for for all these things. So if I want to check out the opens um, in the United States, I can. It looks like a lot of people were opening them in the uh, New York City area, but not clicking through. What's up with that? What's up with that, New York? Better step your game up. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now work for every country that's listed on this side of the. So what's going on there? Lots of things going on there. Um, thank you for your support, <laughs> Natal. Hiccups. So um, that's pretty cool. And if this isn't enough information, I'm going back to the U.S. Um, you can actually see all this information, all the click opens, click throughs, um, archive views, forwards, everything in a um, tabular kind of table view. And get ready because this is a lot of information. <laughs> But um, these, are, these are great reports to give to a client when they ask, like, hey, how is my newsletter doing? Is anyone checking it out? And you'd be like, well, yeah, I have a couple hundred cities in the United States alone, you know, at least reading the me email message and sometimes clicking through, which is cool. And you can actually get this report out in its own little window. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, spiff this up a bit and uh, send it away. So, I mean, if we do a, I think, yeah, let's do a search on just New York. And uh, you can get kind of feel what's going on. So let's say at this IP address, um, someone opened the message, and then a couple seconds later, looks like 30 seconds later, so we're doing a bit of reading, um, clicked on this link, and then a couple seconds later, or like a minute later, they clicked on this link. So they they got an introduction on how to install it, and then they checked out the demo, and then a little couple minutes later, they checked out the message again. So that's interesting. You get kind of a history of the email message. It's kind of it's a little strange. Um, so this person's kind of interesting. So they started out with viewing archives, and then clicked some links um, in the in the message itself, which is kind of cool. Let's see what's this person did. Some more click throughs, archive views, click throughs. So if you're if you're wondering what's going on, this one's really interesting. So they opened it a whole bunch of times in three different days, and then clicked on the purchase link. And then open it a whole bunch of times um, during the day, and then clicked on the on the purchase link, and then open it up one in August, September, a couple times in September again. So people, you know, like once once your email messages are in someone's inbox, they kind of stay, and people do refer to them. So it's kind of interesting information to mull over, and uh, you know, next time you send a newsletter out, you can use this information, make your newsletter better, things like that. So that's all cool. 
So that's a uh, that's a quick demonstration of what's going on with the the Trekker plugin version six of Datamail. Um, again, uh, the the stable release of version six should be out in a couple weeks. I'm just rewriting the manual to update it, um, squashing any niggling bugs, uh, user interface problems, things like that, and uh, you know just getting everything ready. Um, uh, if you have any other questions, please uh, just email me at uh, justin at datamailproject.com or uh, check out the datamail support site or um, yes, post something on the boards. Um, thanks for watching this screencast, and I'll have uh, more later.